Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over some advanced examples of the power rule for integrals. All right, remember the power rule for integrals is actually the following two rules. One for when p, when the power is not equal to negative one, and the other for when it is equal to negative one. Okay, so if the power is equal, not equal to negative one, then we get this simple rule. When you integrate x to the power, eh, when you integrate x to the power p, so be careful there. Then you get uh, 1 over p plus 1, x to the power of p plus 1, plus the constant of integration. Okay, so I'll just put c of i. And when the power is equal to one, negative 1, then, see right here, you get ln x plus the constant of integration. All right, so let's go over some examples. So you have the integral of t cubed minus t squared over 2 minus t dt. So let's integrate this. So the first integral is going to be 1 over 3 plus 1, which is 4, to the power t to the 3 plus 1, minus t squared over 2. So we're going to get 1 over 2, so we ignore that part. But then the power rule tells us we're going to get 1 over 3 times t to the power 3, minus 1 over 2 t to the power 2, because the power is just 1 in that case. And then finally, the plus c. Okay, so let's just simplify that a little bit. We'll get 1 fourth t to the power 4 minus 1 sixth t to the power 3 minus 1 over 2 t to the power 2 plus c. And there's your answer. All right, let's do another example. So you have the integral of minus 7x plus 1 over x minus 2 over x squared. So essentially, you see what we're doing here? We're just integrating each part separately. And the reason we can do this is because we're just adding and subtracting stuff. In a later video, you'll see what happens when we multiply two functions together and we want to integrate them. But for now, we're just adding things, adding and subtracting functions and integrating them. And you see all we have to do is do them separately. So for example, we only have to do this separately, this and this. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get for the first one, negative 7 over 2x squared, because the power is 1. In the next one, remember this, if we rewrite it, is actually x to the minus 1, so the power is negative 1. So that means we have to use the other rule in the power rule, which tells us that the integral of that is going to be ln x. And then, similarly, for the next one, we have to write this as 2 to the power x to the negative 2. And so when we take the integral of that, notice we have a minus sign here. We have 2 out in front. But then we multiply by 1 over the power plus 1. The power plus 1 is negative 1. So that times x to the power plus 1, which is negative 1. And then plus the constant of integration, c. OK? So let's simplify that. We get negative 7 over 2x squared plus ln x. Now careful here. Minus 2 times 1 over negative 1, that's plus 2. So I'll just circle that right there. Be careful. Times x to the minus 1 plus c. And of course, you could write x to the minus 1 as 2 over x if you wanted to. All right, so those are two examples. Let's do one more that's more complicated than both of these. And it's this one. So you have integral of x squared plus 1 divided by square root of x dx. How would you do this? Well, you can't integrate. It doesn't look like you can integrate it separately because we're taking x squared plus 1 and dividing by another function, square root of x. So the trick is to separate them. Remember, if you divide by something, it's the same. If you take two things, if you add two things together and you divide them by a common thing, you can just take each part that you added and divide it by that common thing. separately. All right, just like that. Okay, and now if you simplify this further, you'll get square root of, well, what's the power? x squared and the power on the bottom is x to the 1 half. And then here you have 1 over x to the 1 half. So what do you do when you have same exponents, but it, when you divide two uh, bases with the same exponent, uh, two of the same bases with different exponents? Then this exponents subtract, so you get 2 minus a half. 
And then plus, well, all I need to do is bring that to the numerator, so x to the minus a half dx. Now we're basically in business because x to the 2 minus a half is just x to the 3 halves. All right? So, we're, uh, so we integrate that, and we get x to the 3, well, what are we integrating? x to the 3 halves and x to the minus 1 half. That's equal to 1 over the power plus 1, x to the power plus 1, plus 1 over uh, the power plus 1, x to the power plus 1, plus the constant of integration, which simplifies to, well, let's look at each of these denominators. 3 halves plus 1 is 5 halves, so the reciprocal of that is 2 fifths, x to the 5 halves, plus negative a half plus 1 is a half, the reciprocal of that is 2, so we get x to the, uh, 2 times x to the 1 half, plus the constant of integration. And that is your answer. Okay, so basically the idea is if you see a constant out in front of the integral, for example, going back to example 1 or 2, right here there's a constant divided by 2. Right here there's a constant, negative 7. Right here there's a constant, uh, negative 2. So, sorry, in the first one it's negative a half. You just ignore those, the integral passes right through it, just like you had with derivatives, or just like you did with derivatives. Second thing, when you add a bunch of add or subtract a bunch of functions together, like this, this, and this, what do you do? Just integrate each of them separately. Alright? And if the thing looks a little complicated, like this example, what you can try to do is try to split it up. Notice how there's only one expression in the denominator but then you added two things in the numerator. So split up the fraction and treat them as two different problems. See if you can rewrite it as, power, as x to the power something. And that is all.